Hey all, Dwarf Lord here. This is my guide on how to get rich in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And how rich you want to be, that's up to you. Maybe you need a fully decked out PvP character worth 100 high runes, or maybe you just want to have a nick. These are many strategies that I use or that other people use to make profit in Diablo 2. Some are time sensitive and are really only worth doing at the start of ladder launch and others are more of a late game money making scheme that isn't really possible at the start of ladder. Some of these strategies greatly benefit the use of a form like D2 JSP, though it's not mandatory. Similar to our real life careers in Diablo, some people really find a niche and focus on this one thing. And so I'm going to give you some of those strategies that some people really focus in on and become known for. And I'm also going to be telling you different things that are small, but can add up. And, uh, you know, the people who don't pick up these certain items that seem worthless, uh, you know, they're kind of throwing away what I think is a decent amount of profit. Let's start with perfect gems. Don't sleep on the perfect gems. My friend has a couple of each gem, and then he doesn't pick them up unless he needs them. But gems, they have value. A lot of people want the gems. So much. I got more than this, bro. It's just, just some of it. I love jewelry, man. It's, just... it's for crafting. It's for re-rolling. Whether they're re-rolling monarchs for trying to get a, a J-mod or charms or something. Or you yourself could roll charms or J-Mods, that kind of stuff, in the Haradra Cube with three perfect gems. Uh, so it's whether you want to gamble or you want to just sell the gems. I say pick up the gems. Sell the skulls separately. Sell the amethyst separately. Sell the rubies separately. And sell the other ones uh, together. Because the ruby, amethyst, and skull are worth about twice as much as your other gems. So whether you're going to keep the gems and use them or you're going to sell them, pick up the gems. Don't just leave them on the floor or I'll pick them up. Actually, maybe do leave them on the floor. and Tell me what game you're in. Thank you. Bale and Neelithok charms. People buy these, especially with 41 plus health roll as proof uh, to say that, yes, this did drop from Bale or Neelithok because only Bale or Neelithok can roll the 41 plus health mod. You could use gems that you're picking up, because I told you to pick them up, uh, to roll them as proof and then sell them, or maybe strike big and get a skiller with life or faster hit recovery or a GG melee charm. Runes. Collect and cube low runes into rowels, you know, cube your towels into rowels, and then also collect uh, your spirit runes and your insight runes and keep a supply of other low runes every now and then someone's going to pay five form gold for a random low rune because they need an L rune and you can be like boom I got an L rune and that all adds up and then later on you've made 100 or 200 form gold from little tiny runes that are, are worthless so sometimes you got to be quick but you can make good profit off of junk. Then all those runes that you're collecting, you can sell those as reroll sets. So a full set is worth much more than the individual runes, although this requires a hell rune as well. So Talthel or Am Hell or Router Talsol Hell, people are gonna pay for that. They want the convenience. They wanna roll a perfect monarch, but they need the runes to do it. And that's actually another thing you could do. Maybe you don't sell the runes. Maybe you roll a perfect monarch and uh, you know that perfect spirit and sell it for, for profit. You could do either. You could you yourself be the one rolling the, the rune word and selling it for profit. Or maybe you just want to sell the runes. But do one of those for sure. You know, 10, 10 spirit sets. That's going to take you a day or two to collect, and there's 100 formal gold of stuff that you might just be leaving on the ground. 
Other things you can do with the runes is crafting sets. So selling together or individually, browse, perfect amethyst and junk jewels, uh, or other things like rubies and souls and junk jewels. You could be selling armits, mithra coils, vampire bone gloves, vampire fang gloves, uh, collecting all those things. Sure, it adds up bag space and you have to mule more often, but if you have the mules set up to conveniently do that, it doesn't take that long. I know a lot of people who don't pick up the gems and the low runes, yet I've sold enough of them to be worth a couple high runes. So it takes some work, but on GSP, it's, it's very easy to make a post and say, hey, I'm selling this, and then someone will message you saying, okay, I'll buy it. You, know, you don't have to sit in a trade game. You can be magic finding while trading. Keys. Some people, they just are key runners and they sell the keys. Also, while running keys, you're going to get a lot of runes from the Countess and a lot of gems, I find, from the summoner runs when you're clicking all those chests in the dead end. I've met people who say, oh, I don't click those. Ch should I? I should have I should have been clicking those chests. Uh, yeah, I've gotten so many high runes from those chests. And a lot of gems and charms. So definitely click those chests. I don't I don't know why people don't click chests. Torches. Some people they just buy keys and sell the torches because there's work that is done to convert keys into a torch, and then they sell the unidentified torch. So they're just literally buying the keys, they'll buy hundreds and hundreds of keys and sell hundreds of torches simply because they are getting the profit by doing the work, right? Let's say it's 50 form gold for keys, they sell the torch for 100, right? Let's say in the very first week or days, a key set is a uh, couple hundred form gold, and then they're selling torches for you know, two or three times that because not many people will be able to kill Ubers. When Ubers become a lot easier to kill and more people kill them, then torches are less worthwhile. But if, if you very quickly can kill Ubers, you can just buy keys and print money. Bases. A lot of people are going to be focusing on bosses, Mephisto, but they won't find bases really from Mephisto. Maybe from a lucky weapon rack, but it's not going to compare to people doing pits and cows. So if you want to focus on the pits and the cows with whatever character you can run, you're going to get a lot of bases. And people, they want those bases. So maybe maybe you're, you're going to be a base person. You're just going to run all those high-density areas, and you're going to sell all your bases to the people who are killing Mephisto, those, those meth heads killing Mephisto. But conversely, if you're running a lot of bosses, you're going to get all the uh, essences so you can make those uh, talent reset tokens. And you can sell those to the people who don't really know what the heck they want to do. They, they keep wanting to respect their character. So they just don't have those commitment. They have all those people who have commitment issues. So, uh, you know, I would collect respect tokens and then I would, I would sell them and you know, make uh, 50 form gold a pop and I'd have 20 of them. So that's an option as well, selling those tokens. This is niche, but some people will buy low level dueling items for the purpose of imbuing. So they will buy ethereal throwing spears, ethereal ornate plates, ethereal uh, ancient armor, uh, they'll also buy the exceptional version of the ethereal throwing spear. I'm forgetting it at the moment. Anyways, uh, they'll pay 10 or 20 form gold for one of these bad boys. So if you find them, you could store them on a mule and sell them when you find a couple of those and find a buyer. It's totally up to you. Uh, other people are going to be doing gold find barbs and gambling, you know, so you can be... Uh, gambling and then selling the items you gamble or 
uh, people will buy in-game gold and you can sell that. Additionally, with gambling, people, I don't know why people love to gamble, but people will buy gamble packs. So you could sell, uh, you know, all these hell found rare rings and unique rings and amulets and charms and pelts and circlets and all this kind of stuff. And you can sell like a full character or multiple mules full and auction it off and, and make good profit because <laughs> the reality is they're, they're never going to be that many good items. Usually you're going to pay 3000 for all these items and you're going to have like uh, a thousand form gold of items. So if, if you want to be the person who gathers up hundreds of charms and sells them all in one go, you could make a profit. Some people do that. But if you don't want to do that, you could just sell unidentified. You know, I sold an unidentified Hawes, Herald of Zacharoom, for, I don't remember the amount, but maybe, let's say it's 300. Then the guy identified it was like 150 enhanced defense. It's now worth half of what I sold it for. Usually, items sell unidentified for more than what they are worth identified unless they're identified perfect or very close to it. So it's a big gamble. You might as well just sell it unidentified. Another way that people make profit is by rushing. G rushes and C rushes. A G rush is where you get someone who's level 40 and they have not killed normal bail. They're the bumper. And then other people have a level one character and you're gonna rush them to hell. And uh, so you, the bumper, you can even pay them a little bit for their service, but then the the people who are getting a rush, you're going to pay 100 to 200 form gold, maybe more, very early on, and in an hour, you could have almost 1,000 form gold from all of that, and it takes some time to set that up, but if you have a character who's capable of doing a hell rush, you could rush someone from normal to hell, get all those people, make huge profit. And while you're setting it up and you're, you're looking for the bumper and you're looking for the six people who are going to pay you, you just magic find during that time. So some people make a lot of profit from just rushing. A C rush requires you to make a character on classic and they don't need a bumper. And you rush them. Uh, you don't have to worry about ancients because there's no act five. Uh, although it doesn't work on assassins and druids because, well, there's no assassins and druids in classic. Additionally, if you have a lot of accounts, which most people don't, but let's say you're a, you have eight accounts, you could do Larzic socket quests. Some people do this, right? They're going to rush all of their characters to normal mode Larzic and they could do you know, seven characters in 20 minutes, let's just say 20 characters in an hour. So you have 20 socket quests, which you're going to sell for 15 to 25 form gold. And that's 300 to 500 form gold in an hour from just rushing your seven accounts to normal mode Larzic. And then people will buy those socket quests. One last very, very, very niche way to make profit in Diablo 2 is character leveling and i'm not talking about helping people level up i'm talking about logging into their account and leveling a character for them some people just cannot be bothered to level a character up there are a very select few people who do this on jsp and you might be like whoa that sounds really sketchy uh and I don't know the uh, legality uh, of that, you know, if that's allowed uh, for the Blizzard ter Terms of Service. But nonetheless, people do this. And, uh, you know, you, you could charge someone a crazy amount of money. And when I say money, I mean form gold. I'm not talking about uh, real money, real, real money stuff here. Uh, I just use form gold and money interchangeably. But people will pay multiple high runes to level or have a character leveled from, let's say, 
they have a level 90 and they want them to be 95. They say, okay, I'll do that in a, a week and it'll be 10 burus. They're like, okay, ching. <laughs> so if you have the time and you want to level characters for people and create that sort of uh, very niche, you know, you have to, you have to gain the, uh, the trust of people and it's a very big, big thing. You can't just decide to, to do it and expect to get clients. You, you understand that. You have to kind of create a reputation. But some people do this and make big bucks. So those are a lot of specific ways that you can make make money, you know, make profit, make runes, make form gold in Diablo 2. Um, just saying magic find, that's not specific enough. You know, what are we magic finding? Are we magic finding the cows, the pits, the key running? Or, or are we just going to be buying keys and, you know, making the torches ourselves? So there's a lot of different ways you can make profit, whether you're Russian or magic finding or a combination of it all. I uh, just hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do with your time to make profit. There's way more to just killing Mephisto or running cows. Although still, do those things. So, um, hope this was a interesting enough or informative video. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, comment below. If you like the video, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Dwarf Lord out.